MainStreetLive.com. Getting fuel since 1934. On-site parking available. to reclaim our town, reclaim our beach, and Racing's North Turn is the perfect stop if you're looking for a good drink, great entertainment, and the best in food. We're right on the beach at Racing's Original North Turn. Rhonda and Walt invite you to come on down to dinner tonight. Here are a couple of testimonials. These are actual testimonials from people who have enjoyed the North Turn. Been there many times, always great food and drinks, great location on the beach. And another, what a great experience. It's my new favorite restaurant in the Daytona Beach area. Racing's Original North Turn has been named Top 10 Beach Bar for the six years in a row. Racing's Original North Turn on South Atlantic Avenue. That's A1A and Ponce Inlet, about 3.2 miles south of the Dunlawton Bridge and A1A intersection. It's Racing's Original North Turn, a restaurant, museum, bar, gift shop, live music. That's Racing's North Turn. Hi, this is Cheryl Cook, president of Tom Cook Jeweler, and I'm excited to announce the launch of the John Harvey Designer line to the Tom Cook Jeweler family. This stunning assortment of jewelry features beautifully handcrafted designs from Bauer, with each collection conveying its own story of inspiration. Every piece of the classic chain collection is handwoven by a single artisan representing community and human bonds. This iconic collection portrays timeless beauty and can be worn perfectly with any other piece of jewelry. The Legends Naga collection was inspired by the mythical water dragon that protects the ocean's currents. Wearing a piece of Naga brings love and protection to all those fortunate enough to wear this collection. Stop by Tom Cook Jewelry to discover the ultimate beauty behind each piece of John Harvey jewelry. And with each purchase comes a free gift. Come by to see any of our Naga jewelry shop at 150 South Beach Street with the Riverfront Shops of Daytona Beach. Hours Monday through Friday, 930 to 530. Ever wonder how you escape the shock of survey? Come see for yourself at Angel Felt Shock Effect. Our three daily tours unwrap the mystery of these delectable goodies. Old fashioned creamy chocolate, chewy caramel, crunchy nut, and rich cream. Can't for one yourself. There's no tastier way to learn the secrets of the chocolate factory. Can't make it in? Order online and we'll ship your selection. Come see and taste the old fashioned goodness at Angel Felt Shock Effect. This is Mark Bernier Replay Today. Highlights from today's show that you may have missed. We talk about everything. History, politics, style, music, and sometimes the White House. Our continuing coverage of the authors of the Miami Book Fair presented again for 2017 by Florida Power and Light and Brown and Brown Insurance. A new biography of Bunny Mellon, a style icon, an American aristocrat who designed the White House Rose Garden for her friend JFK and served as a living witness to the 20th century American history, operating in the high-level arenas of politics, diplomacy, art, and fashion. Bunny Mellon died in 2014 at the age of 103. She was press shy during her lifetime. With the cooperation of Bunny Mellon's family, author Merrill Gordon has received access to thousands of pages of her letters, diaries, and appointment calendars, and has interviewed more than 175 people to capture the spirit of this talented American original. And now Merrill Gordon joins us live on WMBB. Merrill, thanks for being with us. Well, Mark, thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted. All right, got to ask you first, who was Bunny Mellon? How did she get in this position? She um, she was sort of an extraordinary figure. She was born in 1910, and her grandfather had been had licensed this new antiseptic, which became known as Listerine. So she grew up with money, and then she married Paul Mellon, who was worth gazillions of dollars. Um, she uh, of Carnegie Mellon fame. Is that um, yes, yes, okay. yes, absolutely. His his father was uh, Paul Mellon's father was Andrew Mellon, who with his family built an enormous fortune based on coal and steel and banking. Um, Andrew Mellon was Treasury Secretary under three different presidents, and his two children, uh, Paul and his older sister Elsa, inherited an enormous fortune. Okay, so how did she get to know JFK? Um, back in 1958, she was living in her, uh, she and her husband were living in a 
a 5,000 acre farm in Upperville, Virginia. I love the name Upperville, Virginia. There's something quite wonderful about it. And a, a friend named Adele Astaire, Adele is the older sister of Fred Astaire. Uh, Adele called up on him and said, I'd love to bring a friend over to uh, meet with you. The friend was this young senator's wife, Jackie Kennedy. And the very next day, Jackie called up on him to say, I love everything about your house, including the stale candy in the bowl. I hate my house in Georgetown. Will you come and help me decorate? Uh, it was fascinating because Jackie was 19 years younger than Bunny, but they had a total meeting of the minds. They became best friends. And then when Jackie, uh, Jackie's husband was elected president and suddenly Bunny was spending all of her time in the White House, she was helping uh, him decorate, she was helping arrange flowers, she was helping with late dinners. One of the things I was able to do as part of this uh, book was read um, about 10 letters that Jackie wrote Bunny from the White House and afterwards. And they were so incredibly compelling. I mean, there was a letter that Jackie wrote saying, everyone else wants to be your friend because they can be in the spotlight. You hate the spotlight, but you just come here like an ordinary working person and you help me. And I'm so afraid that someday you'll just slip away, which of course Bunny never did. They were friends until Jackie's death in 1994. What kind of training did this woman have? Um, she was a talented amateur. Her, her father, uh, Gerard Lambert was quite the character. He uh, did many things, but he uh, did amazing ad campaigns for Listerine, the kind of Hall of Shame ads uh, in which people were kind of embarrassed. Um, even your best friend won't tell you that they have you know, halitosis and bad breath. And he built this amazing estate. I ran out of adjectives to describe the real estate that involved in all of these families. But he had an estate in Princeton, Virginia, and he hired the Olmsted brothers. And these are the sons of Frederick Law Olmsted, who designed Central Park, many of the parks in Washington. So Bunny, at a young age, began to kind of fell in love with them. She'd always loved, loved, loved gardens, but she was she was an amateur. Did they give her sort of a free reign? Yeah, you know, one of the sort of poignant things I, I found was she did things about writing autobiography, and she wrote scribbled down some autobi autobiographical notes. And she wrote about the day she was in her home at Cape Cod, and she was having uh, Jackie and Fred dinner for lunch, and uh, Bunny sitting in her bed looking out at the water, and Jackie calls to say, I can't talk long, I'm going to church, but um, we're coming to lunch today, and Jack's going to ask you something. And Bunny is like, what? And Jackie says, well, he wants to design rose gardens. Got to go. And then Bunny, <laughs> forgive my cold, Bunny talked about sitting in bed and thinking, oh, my God, I don't have official training. I don't, I don't know. How am I going to do this? But she'd been very close to her maternal grandfather, who was a small-town politician in Massachusetts and a um, drug manufacturer, and he had really inspired her love for nature. And he had always said to her, if there's something that you can do for your government, you should do it. So... She was hired. She did these gorgeous sketches. I was able to do use some of the sketches in my book. She brought in a, uh, a landscape uh, designer, Terry Wheeler, who had gone to Harvard and had a lot of detective expertise. One of the fun things was I was able to read some of his letters, and he wrote this letter to Bunny. Um, Bunny had gone to Antigua. They were getting ready for the big dig at the White, big dig at the White House. And Terry was like, well, I just met with the gardeners, uh, National Park Service. They're really concerned about your plan to dig up these corners and put in magnolia trees. They're kind of worried about the wires in the, you know, the White House. But he said, I told them that, you know, we couldn't change this plan, that, you know, because the president wanted it, we had to go ahead, and they won. And sure enough, um, there was Bunny, and they were all digging away a few weeks later, and one of the workmen cut the cord to the Strategic Air Command and put the country on nuclear alert. Oh, my. Yes, it was quite something. And uh, um, Jackie Kennedy, years later, gave Bunny uh, this enormous uh, scrapbook from uh, mementos of the Rose Garden, um, having included a, a reference to this rather dramatic moment at the White House. That is fascinating. Um, she dies at 103. Is she living with family? Is she, does she die alone? What's happening? Um, her husband, Paul Mellon, had died in uh, 1999. Um, as I mentioned, she was enormously wealthy. In fact, her estate was recently uh, estimated at $760 million. She had more than 200 employees, uh, seven different estates, Antigua, Paris, Nantucket, um, New York, Washington. And 
So she was living on her um, mental estate and her wealth, and the last years of her life, I mean, when you're writing a biography of somebody who dies at age 83, you kind of expect that things will get a little, shall we say, quiet at the end. Mm. But I got there, and I had three more chapters to write because of Winnie's involvement with the disgraced Democratic presidential candidate, John Edwards. As you may remember, um, uh, Bunny gave him $3 million legally, but she also gave him $725,000 for personal expenses, which prosecutors charged that he used to support his girlfriend, Leah Hunter, and their baby. So John Edwards goes on trial. Bunny's interviewed by the FBI. I was able to talk to the FBI agent who said that uh, he came and knocked on Bunny's door, and Bunny stood up and said, I'm here to defend John Edwards. And she thought this was – she couldn't believe that you know here she was over 100 years old and people still were interested in her and her life. Um, to his credit, uh, even after the trial was over, there was a mistrial, um, John Edwards stayed in touch with Bunny. In fact, she called him the final weekend before she died. She really was surrounded by friends and family members who cared deeply about her. Do you, is there a marker or anything that indicates – her work in the Rose Garden today? Is there anything that is attributable to her? The design is still as it was. They left everything and they've, you know, they really respected her views. I don't know, to be honest, if there's a plaque. Um, but as you know, that really is her legacy. Every president since then has used that space for press conferences, for parties, for events. Um, so in a way, she, she, she carries on there. Did you get much cooperation from the White House? I actually wasn't trying because I didn't need it for this book. I mean, I got, as I, as you were kind enough to mention, um, her, her grandson, uh, Thomas Lloyd, uh, and her, his wife, Ricky Macedo. Ricky is now the White House Special Secretary, although she did not have that job when I was working on the book. But they were terrific about hel helping opening doors, helping you know, charge people to speak to me. Merrill Gordon and a friend of Miami Book Fair talking about his book about Bunny Mellon, our guest today on WNDB. And as I asked um, virtually all our guests, are you uh, doing a solo uh, presentation or are you part of a panel discussion? I'm on, on a panel discussion with a man who's done a book on Frank Sinatra. So we will have very different and interesting things to talk about that day. Very good. Well, Merrill, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in Miami. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. FM 93.5 and AM 1150 WNDB Daytona Beach. Proud to be locally owned by Southern Stone Communications. Stepping into the controversy, I'm Lisa Racera, Fox News. I was stunned when I came to work yesterday morning and brokenhearted at what I saw a number of Congress doing. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly, the retired general lost his son, a Marine in Afghanistan. Yesterday, Florida Congresswoman Frederica Wilson said President Trump made an insensitive comment when he called the widow of a soldier killed in Niger earlier this month. As for the incident itself, where four soldiers were killed. There's an investigation ongoing. An investigation doesn't mean anything is wrong. An investigation doesn't mean people's heads are gonna roll. Uh, the fact is, they need to find out what happened and why it happened. Wilson says she stands by her comment. Most of Puerto Rico remains without water a month after getting slammed by Hurricane Maria. The governor of the U.S. territory visited the White House today. The president's meeting with Puerto Rico's Governor Ricardo Rosseo comes a week after the president tweeted, We cannot keep FEMA, the military, and the first responders who've been amazing under the most difficult circumstances in Puerto Rico forever. I think we've done a, a really great job, and we've had tremendous cooperation from the governor, and we are getting there, and... Uh, People are really seeing the effort that's been put into Puerto Rico. Uh, four weeks after Hurricane Maria crashed into Puerto Rico as a Category 4 storm, close to 22% of the island has power, and almost 79% of gas stations are up and running. Fox's John Decker at the White House. California's insurance commissioner says preliminary estimates of losses from the state's latest round of wildfires is over $1 billion, and that figure is expected to rise. Nearly 7,000 homes and buildings were destroyed in the wine country fires. At least 42 people died. HUD officials say they're rushing federal aid to people who live there. Fox News, fair and balanced. What if hiring could be easier, less time consuming, with more qualified candidates and faster results? 
What if hiring could be smarter? Thanks to ZipRecruiter, it can be. With one click, post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards so you don't spend time wondering where the right candidates are searching. Then ZipRecruiter uses its smart matching technology to scan millions of active resumes and notify the most qualified candidates to apply for your job. And the ZipRecruiter dashboard makes it easy to review, rate, and contact candidates all in one place. No wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. ZipRecruiter makes it simple for growing businesses of all sizes to hire the right people, no matter the industry. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. We're so confident ZipRecruiter will get you the results you need. We'll let you try it free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash trial. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash trial. ZipRecruiter.com slash trial. The opinions expressed on this show are those of the participants, the hosts, the guests, and the callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions and views of Southern Stone Communications, WNDV Radio, its employees, and friends. Comments regarding WNDV's programming can be addressed to dlang at DaytonaRadio.com. Live from Daytona Beach, Florida, bringing a voice to America's forgotten working class, speaking the truth for the America that Washington left behind, making America great again, one hour at a time. This is Trump Talk Live, where we the people have the right voice, presented by the Republican Party of Volusia County. Now, here are your hosts, Vic Baker and Tony Ledbetter. And Patriot Republicans, and welcome to the Gold Star, Four Star Outrage, Iran Nuke Rebuke, Obamacare Death Knell, UN Slapback, Radioactive Comey, Mueller, Russian Collusion, Bannon, Gorka, War on Rhinos, Trump Heritage episode of Trump Talk Live, the home of fearless truth telling about President Donald Trump, showing Congress what real leadership is about, and showing the world that America means business. It was breathtaking. In the past week, President Trump has decertified the dangerous deal that gives the murderous mullahs of Iran an eventual path to getting nuclear weapons capable of wiping out Israel and anyone else who fails to bow to its unbending demand to convert or die. The ball is back in the lap of the hapless Congress. Expect a big fumble from the feckless fakers who can't agree on much of anything. Our president has pulled the plug on his predecessor's illegal subsidies to the big insurance under Obamacare. Obama ignored the fact that Congress never appropriated the billions he poured into the pockets of health insurance carriers to prop up their outrageously high premiums and deductibles. The game is over. Now Congress is working on a bipartisan deal to keep the scam going another two years. Eventually, the House of Cards will fall and we'll get real market-driven health care that people can afford, and that will actually cover something. To that end, our president has teamed up with Senator Rand Paul in loosening Obamacare rules to allow consumers to buy insurance through cost-saving associations and across state lines. Just watch what happens when real market competition enters the field. The president has pulled the plug on UNESCO, a U.N. agency known for its rabid bias against the state of Israel. A federal judge has blocked the president's newest travel ban order, The Supreme Court will set this straight. These slow-learning lefty judges need a remedial course in executive power from the Supreme Court. Get this. The FBI uncovered a Russian bribery plot involving the Clintons but spiked the investigation just before Hillary and Obama okayed the notorious deal to sell 20% of America's uranium rights to a Putin-connected firm. Now that's what I call real Russian collusion. And get this. Robert Mueller was running the FBI at the time. Explain to us again why he's the guy in charge of witch-hunting Trump over the Russian collusion delusion. Hillary, the tone-deaf blame or game-blame artist, labels our president a sex assaulter. This is the woman who devoted years covering up for her own husband's sexual misadventures, threatening and intimidating the women who accused him. The same Hillary who gleefully accepted big campaign cash from disgraced Hollywood mogul Dirty Harvey Weinstein. Please, Hillary, just go away. 
Methinks the lady doth protest too much. And how about that iconic liberal rag, the New York Times, bearing stories about Dirty Harvey's sexual predator behavior for years before they finally spill the beans? Project Veritas exposes more bias from a Times editor who says he's blinking disgusted by Vice President Pence's Christian faith. How about that? Steve Bannon is unleashing and unloading on the rhinos. He's playing the bad cop on anti-Trumpers in the Senate while the president plays good cop, quoting the beleaguered Mitch McConnell at the White House. We still want to ditch Mitch. The goal is to get tax reform done this year. The middle-class miracle will add rocket fuel to an economy that's already taking off in the glow of President Trump's optimism over the first real businessman to occupy the Oval Office. Records show the fewest jobless claims since 1973 when Richard Nixon was in the White House. The Dow Jones has topped 23,000, another record high, and consumer confidence is on the rise. Businesses and families anticipate more money to spend, invest, and grow when President Trump finally pushes real tax reform through that sluggard Congress. Democrats are starting to panic. Success is setting in, and despite every gator in the D.C. swamp trying to sink Trump's agenda, we will not let that happen. We're coming to you live from the studios of WNDB 1150 AM and 93.5 FM in Daytona Beach. You can watch Trump talk, talk, talk ugh, spill it out, Trump Talk Live right uh, here on the Volusia County Republican Facebook page. When it works, I don't think it's working tonight, folks, but we are on YouTube. You can see us on the Vic Baker channel. Just search Trump Talk Live in quotes. Subscribe to our free podcast or listen anytime through iTunes or Google Play on that podcast. Our thanks to our volunteer crew from the Volusia County Teenage Republicans, including TARS Chairman Duncan DeMarsh, handling graphics with assistance from Ian Escalante and Malcolm Swaggerty, who put it all together. I'm your Trump Republican truth teller, Vic Baker, hosting Trump Talk Live alongside the man who leads a legion of dedicated volunteers who make him look good almost every day, Volusia County Republican Chairman Tony Ledbetter. Tony, we never forget to thank the troops of Trump Nation. That is true. We do have uh, many, many, many uh, local uh, good Republicans that uh, help us uh, look good every day. I've got a special message uh, that I, I want to, to, to talk about. It's, it's, uh, and basically, it's uh, stop bashing Republicans. Uh, I'm sick and tired of hearing people and seeing people go up on Facebook and, and just say stupid things like, uh, don't send any more money to Republicans until uh, we get rid of Sessions. Well, let me make it very clear to everybody out there, all my Republican friends, the Republicans are doing the right thing. The GOP is doing the right thing. They're doing their job. The, the, uh, the House of Representatives are good Republicans. They are doing their job. Now, if you want to get mad at somebody, let's focus on where the swamp is. The swamp is in the United States Senate. That's where the swamp needs to be drained. The House of Representatives has passed this year between 250 and 265 House bills that are now sitting over in the Senate. But they go, you know, they took a vacation. They took another vacation last week. It's time for them to uh, get their work done. And what's going to happen is if we keep bashing Republicans, and then in 2018, if our Republicans aren't fired up, geared up, ready to come out and vote for Republicans, uh, you could have Speaker Pelosi back in that seat in 2019. So if you don't want to see that, uh, just you know, bear with me on this. Stop bashing Republicans. If you want to bash somebody, go after the rhinos in the Senate and help Bannon and Gorka drain the swamp in the Senate. What's next? Okay, we're going to start off with some passion from a gold star, four-star general. The chief of staff of the White House came to the podium in the White House briefing today and he was fed up after fed up. Yep. after a Democrat congresswoman who overheard the president's phone call with the Gold Star Widow uh, and misinterpreted the way he said his condolences and twisted it for public consumption. Uh, John Kelly could take it no more. John Kelly, of course, lost his son to combat in Afghanistan. He is a Gold Star father, a four-star general, and he had this to say this afternoon. Let me tell you what my best friend Joe Dunford told me, because he was my casualty officer. He said, Kel, um, he was doing exactly what he wanted to do when he was killed. He knew what he was getting into by joining the, that 1%.
he knew what the possibilities were because we're at war. And when he died, in the four cases we're talking about in Asia, my son's case in Afghanistan, when he died, he was surrounded by the best men on this earth, his friends. That's what the president tried to say to, a fam to four families the other day. I was stunned when I came to work yesterday morning and brokenhearted at what I saw a member of Congress doing. A member of Congress who listened in on a phone call from the President of the United States to a young wife and in his way tried to express that opinion that he's a brave man, a fallen hero. He knew what he was getting himself into because he enlisted. There's no reason to enlist. He enlisted. And he was where he wanted to be, exactly where he wanted to be with exactly the people he wanted to be with when his life was taken. That was the message. That was the message that was transmitted. It stuns me that a member of Congress would have listened in on that conversation. Absolutely stuns me. And I thought at least that was sacred. That was the general in no uncertain terms. Kelly blasted Democrat Representative Frederica Wilson for listening and politicizing the call that Trump made to console a grieving family. And he further said it really affected him so deeply he had to take a walk around Arlington Cemetery. You know, when I was a kid growing up, a lot of things were sacred in our country. Women were sacred and looked upon with great honor. That's obviously not the case anymore, as we see from recent cases. Life, the dignity of life, is sacred. That's gone. Religion, that seems to be gone as well. Gold Star families, I think that left in the convention over the summer. But I just thought the selfless devotion that brings a man or a woman to die on the battlefield, I just thought that that might be sacred. And when I listened to this woman and what she was saying and what she was doing on TV, the only thing I could do to collect my thoughts was to go and walk among the finest men and women on this earth. And you can always find them because they're in Arlington National Cemetery. Went over there for an hour and a half, walked among the stones, some of whom I put there, because they were doing what I told them to do when they were killed. That's pretty powerful stuff. And he also turned to the media. He said he would take questions only from those who personally knew Gold Star families or had been touched by Gold Star families. And he said this to the media. I still hope, as you write your stories, and I appeal to America that Let's not let this maybe last thing that's held sacred in our, in our society. A young man, young woman going out and giving his or her life for our country. Let's, let's try to somehow keep that, keep that sacred. But it eroded a great deal um, yesterday by the uh, selfish behavior of a member of Congress. It brings to, mel to mind the lawyer Joseph Welch at the McCarthy army hearings yeah. when he said have you at long last no shame have you no honor sir uh, to to and, and this is what the, the yeah, slap this, down this that was, congresswoman deserves this was disgusting this uh, this congressman had no business congresswoman. Uh, congresswoman had no business listening in to a private conversation uh, she had no business being there and it's disgusting that the democrats remember this the democrats are the ones that, that are creating this kind of environment out there. It's disgusting. And um, it, it just, uh, I, I stand with uh, Mr. Kelly 1,000%. I think the general has laid that one to rest. Yes. As our honored dead should be. And we'll return with more Trump Talk Live in just a moment. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239 -0033. You can call us toll-free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Don't go away. We'll return in a moment with more Trump Talk Live, where the truth will set us free. Fall is here, and that means it's time for the New Smyrna Beach Sand Art Festival. Come play in the sand Saturday, October 28th at the Flagler Avenue Beach Approach. Registration starts at 8 a.m., and the contest begins at 9 a.m. with awards given at 2.30. Internationally known master sand artist Rich Verano will be on hand to give advice and create the festival centerpiece. 
Amateur participant categories include children, young adult, adult, and teams. This fall's theme is classic movie monsters. So get your buckets and shovels out for the New Smyrna Beach Sand Art Festival on October 28th. Reserve your space today. Lots are free and are first come first served until full. For more information, text NSB, one word, to 40691. Text rates may apply. Go to nsbfla.com to get more details. Sponsored by the New Smyrna Beach Visitors and Convention Bureau, New Smyrna Beach Chevy, and brought to you by the Southern Stone Event Group and WNDB. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll-free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Welcome back, Trump Publicans. We have a lot to talk about. Now, first of all, the fewest jobless claims since 1973 show a firm U.S. job market. We may be looking at inflation again, folks. If, you know, if, you know the help-wanted signs are out, not enough people to fill them. You know, I'm telling you, uh, this economy's taken off even before Trump gets his uh, tax reform, which we'll be talking about uh, as the show wears on. Um, it's just, it's the gangbusters economy. And the stock market has hit this week, this past week, hit 23,000 for the first time, and it's still going north. Yep. So uh, George W. Bush seems to be going south, though. Yep. Um, at his library, he made comments. He came out of retirement and throwing shade on Trump, denouncing what he called bullying and prejudice in politics and praising the value of immigration. Uh, look, quick comment on George W. Bush. Uh, he wasn't exactly the most successful president. He was a disappointment to many conservative Republicans. Um, he seems to be co-opted somewhat by this liberal uh, uh, dialogue. His brother, Jeb, is a rhino, got pasted by Trump. And you got to feel there's a little bit of sour grapes involved in here. And it's unbecoming of the ex-president. He should just go back and... Uh, That's right. He should go back into hiding in Texas. Go back to the ranch. Bush. Go back to the ranch and start painting more of his <laughs> pictures, you know. Okay. Trump has made three correct controversial decisions, as Town Hall says, Guy Benson, on Obamacare, Iran, and the U.N. Let's start with Iran. The president has decertified the Iran nuclear agreement. Now, that's, that doesn't mean it's been thrown out yet. Hasn't been thrown out yet. But he points out that Iran is the world's lead state sponsor of terrorism. Why are we dealing with these people, number one? Iran is under the control of a fanatical regime that seized power in 1979 and forced a proud people to submit to its extremist rule. This radical regime has raided the wealth of one of the world's oldest and most vibrant nations and spread death, destruction, and chaos all around the globe. Now, he, he recounted some of the history, in case anybody's forgotten. Let's talk about our long history with the mullahs that started kind of in 1979 with the deposing, depos with the, uh, deposing of the Shah of Iran. Beginning in 1979, agents of the Iranian regime illegally seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran and held more than 60 Americans hostage during the 444 days of the crisis. The Iranian-backed terrorist group Hezbollah twice bombed our embassy in Lebanon, once in 1983 and again in 1984. Another Iranian-supported bombing killed 241 Americans, service members they were, in their barracks in Beirut in 1983. That was when the Gipper, Ronald Reagan, was the president. And uh, Iran has been behind of acts of terrorism and violence against the U.S., its friends and allies, ever since. Let's hear more of that history. In 1996, the regime directed another bombing of American military housing in Saudi Arabia, murdering 19 Americans in cold blood. Iranian proxies provided training to operatives who were later involved and Al-Qaeda's bombing of the American embassies in Kenya, Tanzania, and two years later killing 224 people and wounding more than 4,000 others. And so why would the United States of America do business with these people? Why would Obama do business with these people? It's beyond our comprehension. Because what he's done is he's bankrolled the world's chief state sponsor of terrorism. 
the nuclear deal through Iran's dictatorship a political and economic lifeline, providing urgently needed relief from the intense domestic pressure the sanctions had created. It also gave the regime an immediate financial boost and over $100 billion its government could use to fund terrorism. Yes, and, and on top of that, do you remember the pictures of the pallets of cash that Obama shipped <laughs> in yeah. cargo planes? The regime also received a massive cash settlement of $1.7 billion from the United States, a large portion of which was physically loaded onto an airplane and flown into Iran. Just imagine the sight of those huge piles of money being hauled off by the Iranians waiting at the airport for the cash. I wonder where all that money went. It's going into terrorist groups all around the globe, Mr. President. The deal, of course, in spite of the assurances we got from clueless John Kerry and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, it does nothing to stop Iran from going nuclear eventually. It may slow it down. It may not slow it down. But the fact is, it's a sham. Worst of all, the deal allows Iran to continue developing certain elements of its nuclear program. And importantly, in just a few years, as key restrictions disappear, Iran can sprint towards a rapid nuclear weapons breakout. In other words, we got weak inspections in exchange for no more than a purely short-term and temporary delay in Iran's path to nuclear weapons. The President has identified the Iran's Revolutionary Guard as a chief sponsor of terror, and we're going to slap some pretty severe sanctions on them. The Revolutionary Guard is the Iranian supreme leader's corrupt personal terror force and militia. It has hijacked large portions of Iran's economy and seized massive religious endowments to fund war and terror abroad. This includes arming the Syrian dictator, supplying proxies and partners with missiles and weapons to attack civilians in the region, and even plotting to bomb a popular restaurant right here in Washington, D.C. I am authorizing the Treasury Department to further sanction the entire Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps for its support for terrorism and to apply sanctions to its officials, agents, and affiliates. And wrapping this up, we either toughen the terms of this agreement or we terminate the agreement altogether. He's put it in the hands of Congress now in the event. Based on the factual record I have put forward, I am announcing today that we cannot and will not make this certification. We will not continue down a path whose predictable conclusion is more violence, more terror, and the very real threat of Iran's nuclear breakout. That is why I am directing my administration to work closely with Congress and our allies to address the deal's many serious flaws so that the Iranian regime can never threaten the world with nuclear weapons. These include the deal's sunset clauses that in just a few years will eliminate key restrictions on Iran's nuclear program. So let, let me uh, let me right. sum this up for everybody. Um, the reason that we are uh, we just heard all that, the reason we have this problem is one, it's Democrats. Uh, you know, every time you see somebody on the, the TV and uh, with Fox, they got the talking heads, one's on the left, one's on the right. If you, when you hear the Democrat talking, you just have to visualize in your, in your mind that they're telling you a, a ball-faced lie. I, I don't listen to Democrats anymore. Uh, and, and I have a policy here in the county I want everybody to help me with. No more Democrats. So um, I don't think remember, you ever did listen to him very much, Tony. To I, start never, with. <laughs> I never listened to him. But uh, but in the future, we all have to understand we're in this mess because of Clinton and Obama. It, it's, it, we the Republicans didn't create this problem. We have so a caller. We have a caller. Scott in Ormond Beach is on with Trump Talk Live. Sorry to keep you waiting, Scott. Go ahead. 
Well, first, I want to say I've been a strong supporter of candidate Trump. A year ago, during bike week, during the darkest phase of the campaign, I picked up a Trump sign and walked around town showing my support for President Trump in spite of all the crap that was being thrown at him at that time. Uh, but I want to know what happened to the Donald Trump, who in the South Carolina Republican debates said that invading Iraq was a mistake. What happened to the Donald Trump who talked about an America first foreign policy, which I think everybody understood to mean that we would mind our own business. Well, well yeah, I mean, no, I, you well, need to you need to drill down. I mean, what is your real question? My point well, is that when we get involved in all these things on the other side of the world, we don't know what the hell we're doing. We didn't know what we were doing in Iraq. And President well, Trump had several facts wrong in what he said, in what you played. He had his facts wrong. He said that Hezbollah bombed American embassies or bombed the Marine barracks in Lebanon in uh, 1982 and 1983. Hezbollah did not exist until 1985. Well, okay, you know, Scott, it's, that's, it's that's still got, it's okay. still got bombed. But the basic, th- the basic thrust, the basic thrust of it is, Iran still is the chief sponsor of terrorism around the world. We are. We are we're, oh, you don't, you don't agree. You don't, don't you agree don't agree that, that Iran is a chief sponsor of terrorists? That they're not funding all these terrorist activities? Look, what you have, you have two things going on. First of all, Hezbollah has been classified as a terrorist group. It is not. Hezbollah is a militia that saved. Lebanon from well, two Israeli invasions. Scott, you right? you and I can both uh, disagree on that. That you're no, fixated. We well, you're fixed. You're wrong. Well, I'm sorry, you disagree, but we're going to move on. Thank you, Scott, for your call. Okay, we've got other things to talk about. We do not agree that uh, the president did not say the United States would become a complete isolationist country. We still have to keep our eyes on the on the uh, threats that face this country. Yeah, and, and ISIS is about to go away. I mean. Uh, Due to the yeah, presidents yeah. giving the commanders yeah. in the field the power to do what they the, the difference I have with that opinion is the difference with Obama is he did not know what he was doing. And as a result, the feckless activities that he did get engaged when fell flat on their faces. That's we right. are President, winning against President ISIS because Trump he's is letting his generals do what they need to do. Letting the generals get it taken care of. Get us out of this war. And get us away. But America first doesn't mean just sit home and, and stick your head in the ground. Now, Trump is also starting to end Obamacare. Uh, where Congress didn't have the guts to do it. They were afraid to yank the subsidies, which President Obama illegally put in place without an appropriation from Congress. You can cut that call. Um, and uh, then we can um, we can get away from it. But the, what Trump has done is he has done what the courts have already said, that Obama broke the law because he has appropriated billions of dollars to big insurance, which it just enables them to charge higher premiums and put it on the tab of the taxpayers. It doesn't help the person getting the insurance. It helps the insurance companies. He has ended the practice because Congress didn't appropriate appropriate it. Uh, All we have is uh, we can see the the executive order he signed with Rand Paul looking over his shoulder. Rand Paul uh, also is very happy with the president uh, uh, because with another executive order, the president has loosened Obamacare rules to allow competition across state lines and the allowance Rand Paul is for as a libertarian free marketer, allowing people to get in associations to buy insurance to lower their insurance premiums and conditions so they can shop around anywhere in the United States instead of being in a state which has maybe one place to shop or no places to shop and it's take it or leave it. Now, basically, that's uh, that's either buy this insurance or die or buy this. Now, don't buy the insurance and die. We don't care. We just want your money. Well, here's what Rand Paul had to say what, about the, what the president has done this past week. President Trump is doing what I believe is the biggest free market reform of health care in a generation. This reform, if it works and goes as planned, will allow millions of people to get insurance across state lines at an inexpensive price. 28 million people were left behind by Obamacare, do not have insurance today. This specifically targets and will help people who don't have insurance or people f- or for whom insurance is too, expen- uh, too expensive. I'm very glad to be part of this, and I really want to commend the president for having the boldness and the uh, leadership and the foresight to get this done. He's getting it done. Now, what's happening is Lamar Alexander, Republican of Tennessee, and, uh, and Patty Murray, Washington State, Democrat, 
have cobbled together a quote unquote bipartisan agreement to extend these uh, subsidies by actually appropriating it from Congress for another two years. But all you're doing is extending the inevitable that we're going to have to get rid of it. Because with those subsidies in place, free market doesn't prevail. The government's tinkering and the prices get way too high. Just as when the government gets involved in the mortgage industry and, and things go out of whack and student loans, things go out of whack. The same thing with health care. So we're going to have to fix this the hard way. you got to pull off the scab and, and make it heal the hard way. That's what we have to do. So we're going to be back with more Trump Talk Live. We're running out of time again, so we'll see you in a moment. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll-free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Keep your radio, phone app, or computer right where it is. We'll return in a moment with more Trump Talk Live, melting liberal lies one hour at a time. Hurricane season is here, and so is the 2017 WNDV Hurricane Tracking Map. This colorful and informative map not only lists coordinates to make tracking easy, it also has information to help you stay prepared, just in case. The 2017 WNDV Hurricane Tracking Map is available at any one of our Hurricane Tracking Map sponsors, including Krabby Joe's, great tasting view on the Sun Globe Pier, open every day, sunrise to 10 p.m., Krabby Joe's, on the web at KrabbyJoe'sDaytona.com. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The perfect meal awaits you at Krabby Joe's on the Sun Glow Pier. VIP Printing. Voted top pick by WNDP listeners. Go to VIPPrinting.net. Hurricane maps are also available at the Daytona Flea and Farmer's Market. Open every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on Tomoka Farms Road at International Speedway Boulevard. Free parking, free admission. Daytona Flea and Farmer's Market. Pick up your copy of the WNDP Hurricane Map today and get prepared just in case. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll-free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Welcome back. Now, Tony, you have some sponsors to acknowledge. Do you have your sponsors there, or do you want um, to come back to that? Well, let's come back to that. We'll uh, come back to that in a yeah, moment. United States them. has withdrawn from UNESCO. Uh, UNESCO is an agency of the United Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Agency of the United Na uh, Nations, which has gotten more into a rabid uh, 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 tirade against Israel most of the time. And uh, so what it has happened is the United States, we have the graphic there, um, I get along without you very well was the message sent on October 12th. The United States to the uh, UNESCO people said it will with, 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 with withdraw from it. Uh, the rationale is uh, mounting financial arrears at UNESCO, the need to make budget cuts, and for fundamental organizational change. Dis disapproval of it and rejection of its continuing anti-Israeli bias. Perhaps as some parting gesture, the U.S. will remain engaged as a non-member observer to comment. The strong action is in line with stated views of candidate President Donald Trump uh, and President Donald Trump of the need to review U.S. commitments, and uh, especially with those that are not our friends. Now, Byron York, the uh, columnist, conservative columnist, says, what's behind Trump's new executive actions? Let's see executive actions. Uh, President Trump's most recent high-profile actions, uh, actions on Obamacare, immigration, and the Iran nuclear deal do three big things. First, they push Congress to act, which involves more than just calling the bluff of Republican leaders who talked big during Obamacare years but failed to produce one single effort to repeal it that succeeded. The GOP con control both Congress and the White House in a larger sense. Trump's actions point toward restoring proper balance of power in which Congress actually makes law on issues that are clearly his constitutional responsibility, and the president uses his executive authority. It's resetting the clock. Obama, the constitutional scholar, uh, didn't have a very good handle on what the Constitution requires him to do. Now, another person doesn't have a good handle on it is a U.S. judge in Hawaii. A federal judge has blocked President Donald Trump's latest bid uh, to impose restrictions on citizens from eight countries entering the United States as security amount it was to take effect this week. The open-ended ban announced in the last month targeted people from Iran, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, Chad, and North Korea. It's not an Islamic ban, as well as certain government officials from Venezuela. It was the latest version of a policy. Uh, U.S. District Judge Derek Watson uh, granted Hawaii a request to temporarily block it, but you know the Supreme Court is going to turn it back because the president has the ultimate authority on this. So, uh, once again, a, a slow-learning judge has to be taught by the Supreme Court what the law says. Now, another uh, commentary says uh, uh, Robert uh, Donacci uh, from the Daily Caller said, President Trump has surgically dismantled the Obama legacy. 
Uh, Obamacare over the course of his first year in office, largely under the nose of the American people, Democrats and members of his party that have spent the last nine months trying to upend the American health care system, but they haven't done it. Um, he's gotten rid of Obamacare subsidies. He has uh, uh, gotten rid of the navigators for people to buy Obama Obamacare. And he's, he's used executive quarter, uh, orders to roll back the regulatory state. Now, here's the big, Tony, the big, big headline. We're bearing the headline tonight. Yes, sir. The Attorney the, General the, of the United uranium. States, Jeff uranium. Sessions, <laughs> just found his backbone. Yeah. And he is going to investigate or may investigate Hillary Clinton's role in the Uranium One scandal. Now, what has, what has been revealed is that uh, the FBI investigated a widespread and rampant bribery by Russians who were seeking to get this deal, this Iranian deal. Among the things that happened is Bill Clinton got all these speaking engagements with fat speaking fees, and the Clinton Foundation got all these contributions. Yep. All these contributions. And lo and behold, Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State president and a lot of people in the obama administration when they say we have 15 agencies approve this that means they're all obama appointees so that doesn't mean much well the fact is this got approved after the russians were engaged in all kinds of little financial shenanigans the fbi led by guess who robert Mueller. Mueller robert yeah. Mueller. yeah they should go to jail uh, for this spiked the case yep and 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 disregarded it treason. and giving a go and had go ahead for this little uh, the scheme. Yep. Well, that's 20 percent of the United States uranium rights to a, con a firm controlled by Vladimir Putin. You that, want to that, talk you know, about Russian just collusion? Like into uh, uh, Fort Knox and and letting them take out 20 percent of our gold. Let's talk about it's, Hillary. It's and, treason. Uh, yeah. Uh, Russian collusion. Let's talk about the real Russian collusion, not the fantasy stuff. Now, Mueller's in a tight spot now. Now, does does Mueller recuse himself because he's so involved in this mess, or should Mueller be fired and fairly applied? Comey, in fact, um, who's engaged in cover-ups, was fired for legitimate reasons, as it turns out. Yep. Now, Mueller may have to be fired as well, or at least uh, Mueller should recuse himself from this investigation because he was, he was uh, deep, waist-deep in this morass and allowed it to happen. This is, this, is, this is flagrant, flagrant abuse of public trust. And uh, Hillary Clinton, um, 10 agencies were involved in this, 10 agencies. Uh, uh, and the FBI was aware of it. And the Senate Oversight Committee is not going to let this go. They are going to uh, keep doing this. Uh, let me uh, hit a couple of sponsors. We got Marino's Pizza and Subs over in Deland. Um, go see her for, uh, for good food. We've got um, South Daytona Storage and Offices in, uh, in South Daytona, Florida. Milne Roofing um, at 386-986-8688. We've got Sonia Mori, uh, State Farm agent. You can see all these, too, up on our website, uh, revc.org, -E and click on the events tab and go look at our program uh, from our Lincoln Day, which also shows you uh, Mullinex Ford. He, uh, he's been helping us for the last couple of years. You've got um, uh, Bledsoe and Bledsoe in the uh, commercial real estate business. Uh, you've got Realty Pros this year. Uh, helped us out, and um, then you've got um, attorney Don Dempsey on the west side, Ocean Properties down in New Smyrna Beach. Uh, there's a lot of good Republicans in our program, and it's up on our website. All right, thanks, Tony. To get back to that subject now, here's here's the, another big development on it. Apparently, an FBI informant was blocked by Obama administration from testifying on the Uranium One deal. Yep. He was undercover for the FBI. He was blocked during the Obama administration from telling Congress what he knew about Russia's efforts to influence the Clintons and Obama administration decisions on uranium. Attorney uh, Victoria Tenzing, a former Reagan Justice Department official and former chief counsel of the Senate Intelligence Committee, has told The Hill that she's trying to get the Trump administration or the FBI to free her client to talk. She signed a non-disclosure agreement. And I believe uh, Senator Grassley wants her in front of the Judiciary Committee. So that's going to happen. The FBI actually recover, uncovered this Russian bribery plot before Obama and Hillary approved the controversial deal with Moscow. And they actually hid evidence that tied the Clintons to the bribery scheme. So 
you think Russia collusion was something big, and it was. It was it nothing. Was. It was. <laughs> but it was Obama. nothing. It was nothing. But the real Russian <laughs> yeah. collusion was going on with the Democrats. Well, we remember what Obama told the uh, the Russian president right before. You know, Gosh. you know that wasn't supposed to be uh, caught on tape. But he said, you know, just say hey, wait, wait a little while till the election's over, and and I'll have a bit, I'll have a little bit more freedom with you. He said that the Medvedev yeah. was at the time. Uh, uh, the president and right. Vladimir was, or he was the vice president, or the premier, and Vladimir was the president. And uh, now Hillary, the tone deaf Hillary, the blame game uh, uh, loser, uh, has called Trump an admitted sex assaulter. Right. This is the woman who is married to one of the uh, most notorious uh, political sex offenders ever to occupy the White House. Yep. I mean, I, we know that the President Cleveland had an illegitimate child and uh, Warren Harding had a mistress on the side. I mean, it's been going on for a while. But let's face it, in terms of being a predator, Bill Clinton is notorious. And not to mention the fact, we've got graphics to go with this, not to mention the fact uh, she's taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from Dirty Harvey Weinstein, Dirty Harvey Weinstein, who had to flee the country to go into uh, sex assault uh, rehab, whatever that is, you know. It's and, called jail. And whose, uh, <laughs> whose wife... Uh, Georgina Chapman has now uh, his beautiful wife has uh, divorced is divorcing him. Uh, you know, uh, it's great when you're on top, but you know, all of a sudden the cards are falling, and he's not the only one in Hollywood. Hollywood is becoming Follywood, and Hollywood uh, uh, is falling on its uh, own petards of all its preachy, supercilious, holier than thou speechifying at the Oscars and the uh, Obama uh, uh, people that uh, were on the stage slamming Donald Trump look pretty silly right now. Well, now, she says that he's a, a serial sex assaulter, but she we thinks the lady doth protest too much um, and too late. Those who condemn President Trump for not condemning white supremacist groups quickly and forcefully enough after Charlottesville have no problem with Hillary Clinton taking five full days to hypocritically condemn serial predator Harvey Weinstein. Uh, let's talk about some other hypocrites. The New York Times that liberal rag in New York City, uh, the New York Times, the paper of record for liberal left. Um, they buried the story on Harvey Weinstein back in 2004 to protect a top Democrat donor. You want to talk about the great gray lady there. She's got a lot of dirt under her skirts. And um, not to mention the fact that Project Veritas continues to expose the New York Times. They've exposed the fact that they, its website editor, uh, is not very happy with Vice President Pence because he believes in Jesus Christ and professes it without, <laughs> without uh, unabashedly. Yeah, what does guy, he believe the in? guy says, I am so tired of uh, Pence uh, talking blinking religion, and he didn't use the word blinking. So um, that's your New York Times. Now, we uh, will be coming back with Steve Bannon, the bad cop, Sebastian Gorka, and President Trump at the Values Voter Summit. And I have plenty of interesting things to say when Trump Talk Live returns. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Don't leave us. We'll be right back after a brief break with more Trump Talk Live. Fighting truth decay day after day. This is a Hurricane Irma insurance alert. In the coming weeks, crooks, shysters, and predators will be approaching you, hoping to take advantage of you at your most desperate hour. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan, and I have some important advice about your business or homeowner's claim. First, don't sign over benefits from your insurance to anyone. Next, never allow any company to take a percentage of your claim. You don't have to. Also, visit HurricaneLawyer.com to download a free copy of our Hurricane Bill of Rights. That's HurricaneLawyer.com. When your insurance company is not fair, they must pay our legal fees when we file suit and win on your behalf. And finally, if they aren't being fair, tell them you're calling me. The only thing they hate worse than paying you is paying me. Visit HurricaneLawyer.com today. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Offices. Daytona Beach. Your voice can be heard loud and clear right here on Trump Talk Live. Our local number is 239-0033. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the USA at 800-927-0033. Now for a moment of shameless promotion. Uh, Roger Stone, who's known Donald Trump since uh, the 1980 Ronald Reagan campaign when he first met him, and uh, Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon have both said 
they saw a future president in this guy, Trump. Uh, uh, Roger Stone will be in New Smyrna Beach tomorrow night at 6.30 for Trump Fest. He'll be there with Chris Cox of Bikers for Trump and Colonel Mike McAllister, national spokesperson for Citizens for Trump. Uh, it's an event you don't want to miss. It's $20 admission. Uh, Roger will have his book to sign for you. Uh, the Making of the President 2016. It's a pretty good insight into Donald Trump, and you'd be surprised what Donald Trump saw coming decades ago and what Roger Stone saw coming decades ago. Roger Stone is somebody you really want to hear if you're a Trump Republican. So we, we advise you to go. It's going to be at 403 Magnolia Street, the Women's Club. And it starts at 630 New Smyrna Beach tomorrow night. Okay. Now, we have a caller, Tim, in Ormond Beach. Yeah, um, I just want to thank you all. Your show is so informative, and keep it up. Uh, I was listening to the Uranium One um, uh, talk that you recently uh, just mentioned. Um, you know, I, I hope that I want to challenge you all to make sure that you keep up with this story on a weekly basis every Thursday. Uh, you know, Sean Hannity and the Tucker Show, they're really jumping on this. And the inter interesting thing is uh, MSNBC is now – Kind of catch it on it and an interesting point is that you know wasn't mentioned but uh, attorney general eric holder presided on the united states committee on the foreign investment deal when that when that was approved right and, yeah, and right. you know what this thing just is so deep and it's amazing for instance the the chairman of the Ura uranium one donated a million dollars to the clinton foundation that's right and 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 um Five hundred thousand dollars was paid for uh, Clinton's, uh, you know, speech, and it, this is just a really, this is honestly, I think the the the, the largest, the biggest scandal in United States history, and I I really pray that um, that everybody keeps up on this, and and uh, you know, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has really got to go after all these people. This is. This is really hot stuff. He's got to do the job, and and, and uh, everything else that they've been putting up against Trump is going to look like shoplifting a piece of gum uh, after this. So um, yeah, we're uh, going to stay on it. We're going to stay I, on it I hard, really Tim. Appreciate, I really appreciate staying on it. Thanks. We will. Great Thanks, job. Tim. Appreciate you calling in. Now let's talk about General Bannon, who now is the general on the outside, the bad cop, waging war on Trump uh, in Trump Nation on behalf of President Trump. Now that he's no longer shuttered. Uh, uh, shackled by the White House right. job, he can do what he wants, and then Trump can play the good cop with Mitch McConnell. So He's going to go drain the Senate swamp. At the Values Voter uh, Summit, we'll start with Cut One, he explained what's going to be happening. This is not my war. This is our war. And you all didn't start it. The establishment started it. But I will tell you one thing, you all are going to finish it. Yes, Mr. Bannon, and uh, let's take a, li a little lesson from Alabama where Judge Roy Moore overcame $32 million of dirty money. Mm -hmm. And with yep. about $2 million uh, that he had to spend, he won by 10 points. What, what happened there, my friend? In Alabama, the elites, the permanent political class as personified by Mitch McConnell and Stephen Law and Karl Rove and that clique that's been running this town for 30 or 40 years raised over 30 million dollars to go after a good and righteous man, Judge Moore. And this was, money was not used to debate the great issues of the day. It was not to debate illegal immigration or America's foreign policy or Obamacare. That money was used to destroy Judge Moore and his family. The politics of personal destruction as personified by the permanent political class is the only way they can win. What did we prove in Alabama, Steve? The one thing we proved in Alabama, and you guys proved more than anything else, is that money doesn't matter anymore. In the days of the internet, in the digital era, the, uh, the internet's helped disintermediate the mainstream media and the party bosses. And what it's done is made the analog world even more important. That a good man with good ideas with good people to back him up, 
can beat any amount of money. Amen. And a little historic lesson from Steve Bannon. Let's listen to this. We're in the Valley of Decision. This is the fourth great turning in American history. We've had the Revolution. We've had the Civil War. We've had the Great Depression and World War II. This is the fourth. And we're going to be one thing. It's going to take 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years to go through this. And we're going to be one thing or the other on the other side of it. We're either going to be the country that was bequeathed to previous generations and to you, or we're going to be something else. And in that valley of decision, it's not about Mark Meadows and Donald Trump, and Ted Cruz, and Mike Lee, and all the, all the great leaders of the conservative movement, Vice President Pence, Laura Ingram, Steve Bannon, Seb Gorka. <laughs> the burden's on you. The burden's on your shoulders. There you have it. And one last comment, a prediction from Steve Bannon, the psychic. And I hate to break the news to Graydon Carter and the folks, good folks at Vanity Fair. But yes, President Trump's not only going to finish this term, he's going to win with 400 electoral votes in 2020. Hey Amen. Let me uh, yeah, insert so, a little something yeah, here. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, President uh, Trump and uh, Mitch McConnell had a little uh, shindig on, uh, on the White House Rose uh, Garden. I think that's where it was. Uh, remember, we've all grown up hearing that uh, we should always keep our friends close, but we th should also keep our enemies closer. So that um, bear hug or that, you know, that event, uh, President Trump is keeping his enemy closer. And um, so, and, and I don't believe the president's going to go tell Steve Bannon to back off. Um, he's no. going to probably pat no. Steve Bannon We're on the We're going to have that in the yeah. sequence if we have enough time. We've got a little bit of that. But uh, yeah. Trump is winning. We know he's winning. He's winning in so many ways. Now, Gorka took the stage at the Values Voter Summit, and he told everybody, calm down if you're worried about what all this assault against Trump. Calm down. Folks, just calm down. Would you all just please relax? <laughs> Count to 10 and take a deep breath. I know a lot of you were very, very worried when somebody I worked for called Steve left the White House. And I know that even more of you a week later, when I resigned, <laughs> were very troubled. But there's no need. There's absolutely no need. The success of the values you believe in, the success of the mission that we all took upon ourselves last November the 8th is not a function of where I sit or where Steve has his office. This is much larger than the White House. This is a national movement to retake our country. All right, Amen. Sebastian Gorka, and uh, he's quite a speaker. Now, uh, you, you mentioned Mitch McConnell. He was a guest at the White House with Trump. They had lunch together. They had a nice little uh, uh, kumbaya moment in the Rose Garden with the reporters. And uh, Trump emphasized with Mitch, I, he was playing the good cop. Mitch is going to help us get tax reform. Yep. Despite what we read, we're probably now, I think, as, at least as far as I'm concerned, closer than ever before. And uh, the relationship is very good. We're fighting for the same thing. We're fighting for lower taxes, big tax cuts, the biggest tax cuts in the history of our nation. We're fighting for tax reform as part of that. So we'll go to cut seven next where, Mitch, how fast can you get the tax reform done? When are you going to get it done, Mitch? The goal is to get it done this calendar year. But it is important to remember that Obama signed Obamacare in March of year two. Obama signed Dodd-Frank in July of year two. Uh, we're going to get this job done, and the goal is to get it done by the end of the year. Don't want any excuses, Mitch. Get it done by the end of this year. Now, uh, President Trump, uh, we've gone through quite a lot here. Now, the stock market we talked about, we have uh, NRA spokeswoman Dana Lesh, mm -hmm. strong spokeswoman for the NRA. Uh, she announced on Sunday on Twitter that her family had been forced to move suddenly, 
after she received multiple death threats from gun control advocates. Uh, Lesh is a conservative commentary, syndicated talk, uh, uh, talk show host, and of course she's a very effective spokesperson for the NRA, um, Liberty's last defense and first defense, actually. And uh, Dana has said, picture, Dana has said, if they come after me, <laughs> I'm going to shoot back. Yep. I'm going to shoot back. So, so don't mess with Dana Lesh. Now, Laura Ingram, we mentioned George W. Bush earlier in the show. Laura Ingram, who will soon be taking a 10 o'clock slot on Fox News, and that's a welcome addition right. to the lineup. Laura Ingram says, Donald Trump has done more for social conservatives than George W. Bush did in eight years. So, George W. Amen. Bush, go back to the ranch and get your paint set out and start painting by numbers again. Get your chainsaw now, out. Now, uh, one comment I want to get in before we get to the end of the Alexis de Tocqueville was a French nobleman who visited this country from France uh, um, in 1831, and he wrote this diary, this essay about what this was defining America. And he defined it in a way that uh, uh, this commentator says, uh, Donald Trump is not by his own admission an avid reader, but I'm guessing he has at some point cracked open or absorbed ideas from Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America. The French nobleman spent nine months here in 18. 31 and 32, and produced an amazing analysis of the young country. And Trump seems to embody some of the characteristics of the people that Tocqueville describes and is clearly well in tune with the Frenchman's musings about the then distant future in, in the recently concluded presidential election campaign. The key line of attack, he talked about America first. He talked about American initiative, American enterprise, and freedom. And that's what we're all about here at Trump that's Talk right. Live, Tony. to take back our republic. And we'll see you again next Thursday night for Trump Talk Live. Nobody fighting breast cancer should have to walk alone. When you donate to the American Cancer Society Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you're helping save lives through more than groundbreaking research and early detection. You're providing patients, families, and caregivers with access to 24-7 critical information and support. Make a real difference for countless people fighting breast cancer and donate today at makingstridewalk.org. Walk with us Saturday, October 28th at Riverfront Park in downtown Daytona Beach. Register now at makingstridewalk.org slash Volusia Flagler. You've been listening to Trump Talk Live, making America great again, one hour at a time. Follow us at Volusia County Republican Party on Facebook or go to our website, trumptalklive.com for updates. Join your Trump Republican host, Vic Baker and Tony Ledbetter for another fearless edition of Trump Talk Live next Thursday at 7 p.m. right here on WNDB 1150 AM and 93.5 FM. Trump Talk Live is presented each week by the Republican Party of Volusia County, where we the people have the right voice when it comes to defending America's founding values. In God we trust, in America we believe. The Republican Executive Committee of Volusia County is responsible for the content of this advertising. FM 93.5 and AM 1150 WNDV Daytona Beach. Proud to be locally owned.